What up though YouTube? And today we're gonna to be going over color grading in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm gonna show you guys how I color grade some of my footage. So yeah, stay tuned. All right guys, let's go ahead and open up our software. We have the lovely Akiba, which is a narrative short that I've been working on now. Um, I haven't been able to finish it yet just due to business and other things. This is a, a side project. Stay tuned to see this. It's a pretty dope film um, about a woman that preys on men. So stay tuned for that. But we want to get this color here. This was shot flat on the 50 mil um, Canon lens right on the DSLR. We wanted to get it to look a little bit more around this look towards the end. So this was it flat with the center style right on the camera. We want to color grade it to get about there. So first we have our footage, have it in the timeline, obviously. I open up my Lumetri scopes and I usually have the vector scope open. So I usually try to, you know, have the, this white, this white here tries to be on that line. The more it's on this line is more, you know, and this range is more accurate to proper skin tone. So as you can see, it's starting in the center here and it's shooting off here. So that's pretty, pretty good right there, actually. But um, we're going to keep that up just to keep an eye on it. We have our Lumetri scope here, um, which shows us from our darks all the way to our brights, which 100 is the brightest amount on the screen and zero is the darkest point. So as you can see, her hair is darker than this area here. So the left side of this um, of this scope here is lower towards the darks because of her hair and her face gets a little lighter. Her face gets lighter here and we get a little blue here and it gets blue and then the picture frame is about there. Now that we have all that spaced out, we can go to, I come over to Lumetri Color. And I like to start with uh, Creative. I'll go ahead and let's see, let's start with creative. I always bring my sharp up to about 20 to 40. So I just automatically put that in 20. Some people use the automatic LUTs here, which you can, you know, place your LUTs on automatically. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do, that's not, that's actually, that actually looks really nice. It's a nice, nice tone right there. I really like that actually. But we're gonna do ours from scratch, see what we come up with. So I'll have my sharpen at 20. We'll have the vibrance, at, we'll keep it at zero for now. Saturation, I'll bring saturation to 140 for now, but I might drop that back down lower. And let's go on down to the curves. Curves, I usually add in about three dots sometimes i mess with the curve sometimes i don't but more than more more times i would say i affect the curve and then just bring the darks down just a little bit and let's see might bring the these mids here just a bit and the highlight i'll push that up just a little bit let's bring these darks back down just a little and let's check out the color wheel. Now the color wheel, the shadows, I've noticed you can push these shadows a lot lower here on the scopes compared to the shadows in the basic correction. So we'll start with these here on the color wheel. We're gonna bring the shadows down close to the zero on the scope, but not, we don't want it to touch. Let's see. Yeah, about right there is good. Mid-tones, I'm gonna bring those up just a bit. Cause the overall goal here is we want to have these colors more spread out. As you can see, this is a dark, this is a shot, a dark film. So these are gonna be a lot darker in general compared to if you shot something a lot lighter, it will be a lot higher. But so we want to have this is spread out as much as possible. Um, let's leave the highlights alone for now. And vignette, I usually bring this all the way over. 
make it dark first and then I bring up my midpoint and I just play around with these until I get it to kind of where I want it to be and you can turn it on and off to see the difference and then I bring it down negative 0.1 and let's see that's off and this is on so it's very subtle and that's what i want let's go up to basic uh, correction here and as you can see this here is still hitting around that yellowish to red area so we're still good on the, the skin tone it's a pretty good area there uh, let's see contrast Let's, let's spike. Sometimes I spike it up real high. Like I said, again, this would depend on the footage. But let's go with 20 for now. And highlights, let's go with negative 10. Shadows, negative 10. Whites, I'll leave whites the same for now. Blacks. Uh, play around with it, see what works best for you. Mm, I'm gonna go with negative 10. Yeah, negative 10. Saturation again. I might just go ahead and keep this 100. Let's see. Let's see, I like how that looks. So, color's still looking good. And that's, that really is just about it, guys, for a decent, good color grade. This is flat without it. And this is the color grade we just created. So, as you guys can see, this is a really good technique um, to color grade. This is the method I use for pretty much. Um, most of my music videos and and just pretty much just about everything I shoot. This is how I color grade. Let's see, computer freezing up. Yep. So yeah, as you can see, this is our color grade, and that's without it. So you can see there's definitely um, a major, major difference. Um, this again was shot with the center style. And there we go, a color grade in uh, Premiere Pro. All right, guys, and that's pretty much how I color grade my music videos, my narrative films. Pretty much all of my work is pretty much color graded like that. So I hope this guy, I hope this video helps you guys out. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that alert button so you can stay tuned for more future videos coming up. And keep following this 2019 year with me, y'all. Uh, it's gonna be nice. Trust me. Deuce. Stick the case when the